what God wants to do, guys. What God is doing. Thank you for noticing. Anybody want anybody want to know what God is doing? I do. You want to know? I want to know. I want to know what He's doing all the time. I I I see this prayer a lot. Paul, Paul says that we should we should walk in step with the Spirit. So that means that means that the Spirit of God is moving, and our opportunity is to pray, pray and say, Holy Spirit, what are you doing? I want to follow what you're doing. Amen? Amen. And so uh, this morning, I'm going to share with you what myself and the board have affirmed that God is doing. And let me tell you, it's exciting and I believe it's going to be key to seeing more people find Jesus. I want to help more people find Jesus. I'll tell you a quick story. When I, when Rachel and I moved here in 2015, you know, part of it was we loved mom and dad. We want to, we wanted to come back to Madison and help mom and dad with the church, without a doubt. But something that we found out shortly before coming to Madison, is there is this uh, survey that is taken every two years of cities across the U.S. And in the survey, they, uh, they determine through a, a series of questions how church or unchurched certain cities are. When I went to Bible college, I went to Springfield, Missouri. And in Springfield, Missouri, they're ranked number eight as most church cities. They have in their one city about the size of Madison, they have a hundred, at the time of when I was in when I was in Bible college, they had a hundred and twenty <coughs> assembly of God churches in that one city. Springfield, Missouri. And they have so they have a, a city of church, a city a list of cities with most churches. Springfield, Missouri, that's on the map. They also have a list of, of cities with the least church or the most unchurched cities in America. So that means there are cities in America that uh, there are people that have in the last, in the previous two years, had not read their Bible, did not confess uh, faith in Jesus, and did not attend the church in the last two years. And so it's not just people that don't consider themselves in faith, but then those that have maybe fallen away from Jesus. On this list in 2015, Rachel and I came here, we were excited because Madison made that list. Why did that excite us? It excited us because we knew that there was, there was a need for the gospel. There was a need for Jesus. We, at that point, 2015, uh, Madison, Wisconsin was listed as number 62. We said, all right, we're going to make it our mission to help more people find Jesus so that Madison goes from 62 to off the list. Yeah. Right? Is that a good goal? Well, two years later, the statistics came out again. Madison went from number 62 on the list of cities with the least amount of uh, Christians to number 17. <coughs> That means we got further away from Jesus. We got more unchurched in Madison in the first two years. Last year, the numbers came out again, 2019, and now Madison ranks number nine in all of the cities in the U.S. as the ninth most least churched city. What does it tell me as a pastor? What does it tell you as fellow believers? There's, there's some work to be done. There's some work to be done. There's people in Madison that need to hear about Jesus. There are churches in Madison that need to be strengthened so that more people can find Jesus. And so... Today, I want to tell you a little bit about, or show you, tell you, teach you, all of the above, what God is doing 
in Cap City Church so that more people can find Jesus. You guys remember in, in January, I spoke a little bit of vision. And so let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 this morning, because I want to remind you what God was doing. And as the advisor board would tell you, this is something I've been saying since November-ish, that God is preparing us to walk by faith and not by sight. So let's read again 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I want to look at verse 6. And remember, right before verse 6, Paul encourages the believers that are facing persecution. He tells them that there is a heavenly dwelling place that has been promised to you. Basically, Paul was saying, your faith secures a future in heaven. Because you have faith in Jesus, you have a future in heaven. And so he said, as a result of your security, your future being secure, this is what Paul says. As a result, because we have a future that is secure, he says this, verse 6, So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So what does Paul say here? Paul says we need to be people who have good courage, that live for Jesus. We're to walk by faith and not by sight. Not what people are saying around us. We are to walk, we are to look ahead, and to walk by faith. Live courageously. And that morning that I began to preach that sermon, I had prepared this beautiful ending to the sermon. I was like, I want to encourage the church that we should be courageous, we should show up early on Sunday, we should be greeters, we should be uh, children's workers, we should build the church, and the church should get stronger because, you know what, we're going to walk by faith and not by sight, we're going to be courageous and serve. That's how I wanted to end the message. Amen. But do you guys remember how I ended the message? At the, in the middle of that sermon, God was convicting me. I was struggling. Even as I wrote the, the, the notes for the sermon, I was struggling because I knew that there was a greater purpose why Paul wrote that verse. Now, as a pastor, as Andrew, hey, I would love for you to greet on Sunday mornings, serve in kids ministry, and help Austin out back there in the tech booth. But that's not what the full passage said. The full passage says we should live courageously, we should walk by faith and not by sight, we should be courageous, and then it says, because you are Christ's ambassadors. It's not, a, it's not only about what we do on Sunday morning when we gather, but he says, Christ loves, compels us to go and share the good news of Jesus with other people. So what was Paul's aim? It's about lost people being found. Yes. And I told you guys that Sunday, I had no idea what God was planning, what steps of faith God was planning for us to take. But I wanted to let you know today, God has begun, or God, no, not has begun. Shortly after I preached that sermon, God began to show me, Rachel, and the advisory board what plan God has for us, what step of faith God was asking us to take. And so this morning, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about that in an official way. Like I said, today is a business meeting, so not only will we be able to hear the vision that God has given us, but also we're going to make an official decision as a church to say with one voice, yes, God, we will do as you have said. So, a little uh, back story for me as a church, we have said for many years, our goal in Madison is to help more people find Jesus. We want to see our missional communities increase and multiply. 
And then as our missional communities increase and multiply, we would be able to plant churches in different neighborhoods across the city. We thought, hey, if we can get 10 missional communities on the far west side and 10 missional communities here in, in this area of the city, we could plant another church, start a church on the west side. And we have a little map of the city. We kind of know different parts of the city. Monona, south side, east side. We could have a Catholic City Church east side. We could have another church on the, uh, 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 in Verona where it's growing, right? And we've had this dream, had this vision, and we know. And, and, and when I became lead pastor, I said, all right, I've got a five-year plan of how we're going to multiply missional communities and eventually get to the point where we're going to multiply and see churches planted and more people find Jesus. Last year was awesome. We started seeing God working in the church. And in December, there was a moment that happened that was significant in what God began to show us as the next step for us as a church. In December, you guys may not know, uh, or some of you may not know this, but Levi and Morgan Poistra, they were the missionaries for Chi Alpha UW here in Madison. They came. God has blessed their ministry. They run like 200 students. God, they're seeing people baptized, and, and not only in Chi Alpha on the campus, but then they planted a new church, new culture, uh, with some other ministers in town. And they started a church downtown in Club Liquid, um, and they're seeing people come to Jesus. And, <coughs> and, and God called Levi and Morgan Koistra in the first week of December, called them to Michigan. They left, they left the Chi Alpha, they left the church plant uh, to, to go and take a position in, in, in Michigan. And it left this church plant with, with uh, uh, a, young, a, a young leader. And at the same time, the same week that I found about that, we also found out that Amy was, Amy was heading back to Zimbabwe. You know? So here's two, two different ministries. They, they have a lot of worship culture there. And, and, and Amy had, was leaving. I said, all right, I'm going to meet with this young leader. And, and my plan was to say, hey, whatever you need, we want to help you. And so we went for coffee and said, hey, Cap City Church exists to help more people find Jesus. And, and we see you. We see that your, your leader has left. Whatever you need, we want to help you. And I had a discussion at, at, with her at, at Crescendo, the, the new leader there. And uh, she responded back with gratefulness. Hey, the, the Cap City Church has always been a church that's been generous and, and, and helping and caring. And, and when we finished the conversation, I knew this. One, I had just told somebody, I want to help you with whatever you need. And secondly, I knew in my heart, I don't know if I have... I don't know if they have anything to offer. I was like, we're not quite ready to be at that stage where we're helping uh, plant another church. And so I told her, I said, there's a really good friend of mine, his name's Ryan Goldhazy, and he passes the church in some prairie called Focus Church. They have a strong ministry. In the last three years, they've seen 143 people come to Christ. Last year alone, it was uh, 68 people came and made decisions for Jesus. They've been seeing their kids' ministry expand, and, and the community enjoy them. And, and some of the things that I uh, started to initiate here was things that I learned from him. See, Ryan and I, uh, about four months before I became lead pastor, I, I told Ryan, I said, hey, I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I love, I love my board there. I was like, no, Pastor, you're, you're doing great. Keep on going. But, uh, but uh, And you guys at the church keep on saying that, too. I, I appreciate that. But I knew that there was something else in what, what my ministry experience was and, and leading a church. So I just kept meeting with them. And it turned into every other week. We would go to Chick-fil-A on the east side of town and, and dream together. And we would dream about finding and helping uh, building churches that would help more people find Jesus. And, and we both shared our vision, like, hey, yeah, we'll, eventually we'll be able to plant churches here on the west side and, and plant churches on the east side. And, and we just had this dream and vision that, that churches in Madison would be stronger, and especially Assembly God churches would be stronger and be able to multiply and find help more people find Jesus. And as we shared this vision over a, a year and a half, but we also shared some common things about what people said to us when we both became lead pastors. When I became lead pastor of Cap City Church, it was an awesome day. It was almost a year to this day. And it, we're going to be able to celebrate that in a, in a couple weeks. But I, I was introduced as the new lead pastor of Capital City Church in Madison, Wisconsin, at our district council. It's a, 
It's a gathering of all the different churches. And at that, at that gathering, the superintendent said, uh, John Davis, you guys met him last fall? But he said, Andrew, stand up, introduce yourself. I said, all right, Cap City Church, Madison, Wisconsin. And I had five individuals come up to me afterwards, and each one of them kind of gave me, I think it was a congratulation. They said, they said, you know, congratulations, Andrew, you're the new pastor in Madison. And each one of those conversations, about two sentences in, turned around and they said, I would never pastor in Madison. That's a terrible place. That's a hard place. That's a difficult place to, to, to pastor. And to I mean, just one of, them, one of them was a youth pastor, associated with a lead pastor. I mean, just like, I don't know if I was supposed to feel encouraged like I won. Or, 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 or. And Ryan, he shares the same thing. He, he goes, Andrew, the same thing happened to me. I was introduced to a new lead pastor at Sun Prairie. And, and people asked him, well, who duped you into going to Sun Prairie? <laughs> And so we both have this thing, man, we're in a, in a city, in an area that needs Jesus, top nine now in all of the U.S. as cities that are far from God. And we both had this, like, slap in the face, oh, I could never go there, like, good luck. And this is, this is something not only that was told to me, not only that was told to Ryan, but even Pastor Bob, when he first took the church 15 years ago, the superintendent looked him in the eye and said, don't you know that, that, minist uh, that Madison is known as a graveyard for ministers and ministers? Yes. And so Ryan and I have been talking for about a year and a half saying, we've got to change this trend. We've got to change this reputation. So when, the new, when, the, when that brand new church plan was was struggling without a new leader, and, and you know, we, I, I told her, hey, we want to do something. I don't want to see another church close. <coughs> but I told her, I, I don't know how much I can actually help. You should talk to my friend Ryan, and, and he could help you out, be a, become a church that continues to sustain itself and help more people find Jesus. And so I didn't know this. I prepared a message, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, for you guys. We're going to walk by faith, not by sight. I preached that message. I'm like, and, and even in that message, uh, I, I mentioned the board asked me, what does that mean? Or how are we going to pay for what God's going to do? I said, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know how we're going to pay for it. But I know we're going to do things this year that are going to help more people find Jesus. Yeah. And so on January 22nd, I got a uh, text message from Ryan, uh, my pastor friend at Sun Prairie Focus Church, and he said, Andrew, I got good news. Can we meet for curry box? And he really likes a curry box. I really like curry box. So whether, if it's not Chick-fil-A, we're at curry box every other week, talking and dreaming. And so he said, uh, let's meet. So January 23rd, it was a Friday afternoon, yeah, we had lunch, and he told me, Andrew, you wouldn't believe what discussions I've had in the last week. He says, you know, you told that pastor to come and talk to me. They came and talked to me. And, and we're in discussions about becoming a parent church, adopting the downtown campus and helping them build stronger, uh, stronger systems and help people find, the more people find Jesus downtown. And I was really encouraged. I was like, awesome. And then he told me a little bit more, he says, and another pastor called me from another small town outside of the Madison area, and he asked me, hey, would you consider, would, would Focus Church consider parenting my church, helping us become a stronger church that help more people find Jesus? And Ryan was getting excited as he's sharing with me, we're eating our, our curry in the box. And, and I responded to him in this way. One, I was super excited. I was like, that's awesome. This is what we're dreaming, this is what we're talking about. You know, like more, more churches, adapting churches and strengthening churches. And yes, the, the churches in Madison need to be stronger so more people can find Jesus. We can reverse this trend. And then my second sentence came out. And I said, with all honesty, I said, man, Ryan, I would love to sit in your seat. I dream about this. I dream about being in a spot where we can start adopting more churches and, and helping more churches and strengthening more, more uh, ministers so that more people can find Jesus. And Ryan's a faith-filled person. 
also sent with God, we're both hearing from Jesus, and he's, he replied to me this way, well, why don't we do it together? And I said, well, let's hear about that. I got out of napkin. You know, you, you, if you've met with me often, you know I carry my green book around with me a lot. Let's, let's figure this out. What would it look like for two churches to become one with the sole purpose of helping more people find Jesus? I said, all right, well, we need to, we need to pray about this. This is, a, this is a big move. But I was reminded of a passage that some of you may have heard previous pastor talk about a lot here at Cap City Church. Let's look at John 17 for a moment. And this is the beautiful prayer that Jesus prayed. And he prayed this prayer for every believer. He prayed this uh, prayer even for every future believer. And in John chapter 17, Jesus prays a prayer of unity. In John 17, verse 20, it says this, I don't ask for these things only. Let's talk about people being sanctified, coming to Christ, being holy. Says, I don't pray for that only. I also pray for those who will believe in me through the word of the believers, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And this is what the dream became a vision, became a prayer point, became a fasting point, became a decision for the board to make is that God begin to reveal the step of faith that we are to take is to become one church with focused church some prayer so that more people can find Jesus. We've decided, just as Jesus desired for us to be one, that we would be stronger together. That we would make a greater impact for the kingdom that our combined resources would increase our ability to do ministry, that the uh, leadership would be strengthened as two uh, boards come together as one to, to advance the kingdom here in Madison, that this trend that we've been seeing over the last four years or more in Madison would begin to be reversed, that the church of God was actually meant to be effective and healthy and not just exist. And so today, I wanted to share with you guys as a church what God has revealed to me and Rachel through prayer and fasting, through Ryan and his wife, Shalee, through our advisory board over the last few weeks, through the church, at Fo the board at Focus Church, is that God is leading us to become one church in two locations with a main focus to help more people find Jesus. So I want to take this moment, I'm going to invite Linda for a moment, she doesn't have to stand, uh, or she could maybe we'll come up, sit on the stage together, and I want to her to share some of the things that God was showing to her, or telling to her, as she prayed about, God, do we need to become one church, focused church, in two locations, with the main purpose of helping more people find Jesus? And then I want to put Angel on the spot, because I emailed it, but I didn't confirm it with him. And Angel is going to share what God has begun to show him and, and, and confirm in his heart. But as uh, today, the advisory board and myself and Rachel have affirmed that God is in this and that God is asking this next step, this next season, to be one church in two locations with the main purpose 
to help more people find Jesus. So, Linda, would you come for a moment and just share in brief um, what is God in brief? I added that on purpose. Do you want to stand or want to sit? Oh, I'll stand. Okay. And what is what has God been? Have you been praying about this? What has God been speaking to you? Well, <coughs> pardon my voice. Um, I have to go back to that Exodus scripture because um, when God gave me that word that particular day about the people saying we're going to do everything that God shows us to do. And they said that with one voice. And I think that's what <clears throat> Pastor is trying to tell us today. That we don't want to be half of us, you know, thinking one thing and half of us thinking another thing. And it's all right to have an opinion. But I, I was rereading Exodus 5, and I just had this thought, because that scripture that says they told Moses they would do, actually they were telling God that everything that God had said, with one voice, they said, that's what we're going to do. And if you read on just a couple of other verses under that, they say it again. They say, not only are we going to do it, meaning being obedient, then, and I think it's in those two verses after that, they talk about all that God has said, we're going to be obedient to do it. And I kind of wondered about that. And I thought, gosh, would, 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 um, Moses, would he have been able to continue hearing from God if he had had a lot of dissension and if the people had said, no, nah, we're not going to do that, right? But that's not what happened. And I think anytime you can get a bunch of people to agree on anything, you're doing something good, right? And, um, so that's one thing I've been pondering. It's that ability to be obedient. Because the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And that obedience, that willingness to be of one voice, boy, that really makes the ministry fly. It really makes it fly, it gives it wings. That's what happened to Moses. And the other thing that God showed me, which I shared um, in the advisory board meeting, was, um, you know, we're contemplating putting these two uh, congregations together. And uh, it's kind of like entering into a marriage. And you don't enter into a marriage with the idea of how do I get out of this. You enter into it with, thank you God for sending me this person. You guys. <laughs> and we're going to be together until God puts us asunder. And so that's my dream for all oh, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> that's my dream is that we can hear from God, we can be obedient to what he says, that gives wings to the ministry, and because you can't just can't be being obedient to God. There's just no substitute for that. I mean, you can praise God, you can give money, you can I whatever you want to do, but just the obedience to do what he says to do. So the marriage, we're contemplating marriage. 
And we're doing that because we're in love with God, right? And we want to love on more people. And we're not looking, we're not thinking of ways to get out of it. We're thinking of ways to get in it and be our very, very best. So we have decided, we're, we're deciding that we would be, why do people get married? Why? Because they uh, decide that it's better, it's, it's, that they would be stronger together. And that's the decision that we're making as an advisory team today. We will be stronger together, unifying under one purpose, to help more people find Jesus. So Angel, would you mind coming for a moment and uh, sharing as you've prayed, what have you wrestled with God with, and, and what did he speak to you? I'm prepared with no notes, and I know it. <laughs> yeah, no, um, not really um, unprepared. Oh, I am unprepared with no notes, but I don't feel I needed notes. Um, I had been praying, as, as the pastor had asked me to, um, I had been praying about um, what he had asked me to pray about and um, what you've been hearing about. And I was consistent in praying about this. And, and um, the Lord spoke to me, and, and I think um, in a nutshell, to keep it brief, what he told me during this whole time um, was, and you know, I believe that you pray and you speak to God, but I believe that when you read the word, God now speaks to you. Amen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, in a nutshell, it was 1 Corinthians, and it was, and this was it. Uh, the body is not supported by one person, but by all of us. We are one. We are strongest working together in unity. Teamwork is the key to living life in harmony so that we can do God's will. I love when I read that um, because it said it for me. Uh, but you know, some of the things that I was struggling with was I've been uh, sitting here at this church uh, for uh, almost 10 years. Um, the, the, the people that I look around, there's still some people here from, from 10 years that were here. Um, the Richard, Dion, uh, Rajiv, um, um, Lewis was here when I got here, but but it was it, this is a very special personal uh, place for me uh, that was not only um, uh, what I knew what I had been called to do was um, to grow God's people, but it was just a personal place for me. This is where I got married. Uh, this is where, um, um, when I walked in here, I was uh, single. My my kids were, uh, I, had, I had broken relationship. I had kids in other states. And I became a single dad here as, as Pastor Bob uh, had helped coach me through that. I became a father. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, I became a father here too. Yeah. We had a kid during this time too. Um, I mean, just a lot of things. Um, listen, folks, I was delivered from many things, sitting on this pews. I was um, uh, just just a very special uh, place for me. And the people that, um, that we gathered with here were very special to me and still are. Uh, but um, so, so what I had wrestled with was, is that going to change? Is um, this... Um, is this going to change for me? Is this going to change? That was that was what I what I wrestled with. Uh, God gave that yeah. that word to me that just summed it up in, in a nutshell. And um, and yeah, and I and I and I prayed um, a lot for our pastor because I felt that I had to uh, I had to pray and, and ask God to uh, protect him. And his family, his vision, his yeah. ministry, and I also always felt that I had to support him and his family and his ministry, and that was my job. And so I did that, 
I did that, and um, and this is what God revealed to me. What I just uh, told you guys that we are stronger, and and so now I, I became to get excited by I you know I came to get excited by the whole thought of what how this is going to look and things like that. So yeah, so that's it. Thank you, Mark. Amen. This is uh, where we are at as a church. Our advisory board has been praying with me and Rachel and has confirmed God seems to be in this. And we have taken a vote last Sunday to say um, we are willing to be acquired by Focus Church to become one church with two locations. So I use the word specifically acquired. Why? I said at the beginning, this is an official business meeting. So there are some decisions that, uh, there's some processes that still need to happen in order for that to take place. First thing is that we need a body affirmation, so the church affirmation to what God is doing in combining two churches in one so that we can see more people come to Christ. So I want to take a moment before we get to an official uh, vote. I know uh, you can go ahead now and pass those out if you would. Uh, there, there will be an uh, official vote that will be taken today. Um, but to answer a few of the specifics, what will be happening, Pastor? What are you saying? What we are, what are, what we are deciding is to combine two churches. So we will be there will be two Focus Church locations. Focus Church Sun Prairie and Focus Church West Madison. I will remain the lead pastor at Focus Church West Madison, where we will continue to see more people come to Jesus. We'll continue to function in ministry on Sunday mornings, where we'll have an awesome, thriving children's ministry, an amazing expression of worship, and a message every Sunday morning. Uh, we will continue to uh, be a church that is multi-generational and multicultural, but we will exist together as one. So we will have extended family in some prayer. And some prairie would have extended family in West Madison. So when we think about ministry ideas in the city, we can come together and be stronger together. When we think about in building improvements, our resources will be together and we'll do these things together. When we think about worship gatherings in the city, we can have potential to come together and maybe quarterly or uh, every uh, or or um, or once or twice a year come together as a body and celebrate all that God is doing. When Focus Church Sun Prairie sees 20 people get baptized, we'll praise God because we are Focus Church. When West Madison sees individuals come get baptized, Sun Prairie will celebrate because we are Focus Church. When we see people on a regular basis make decisions to follow Jesus together as one church, we will celebrate all that God is doing. And so I uh, have been excited, uh, and I, I sent an email out that this is an important meeting. Please come and get together. Why? Because I, I believe that God is doing something, and the seeds of it have been planted way before I even became the pastor. Some of you that have been sitting in this, uh, these seats for a, a while remember the vision that uh, our previous pastor would talk about becoming one church. If you've served on tech team at any point, you know that the password to that, I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's John 17. Because there's been a vision that churches would unite together with one purpose, that more, that more people will find Jesus. The, if you know the password, to the Wi-Fi in our church for the last, I don't know how many years, has been one church. Why? Because the seeds of this vision, the seeds of this step of faith that God is asking us to take at this moment have been planted way before this date 
ever came to pass. And so God is doing something that I dreamed would be a year five kind of step. We'll start adopting other congregations. We'll start planting churches. We'll see increase in our missional communities. But God has said, for, for such a time as this, I am joining two churches to become one so that more people would find Jesus. And so today, if I can get one of those sheets of paper, before we take an official vote, the way that I worded it was purposeful this morning. The question that I'm asking is this. Uh, do we believe God is expanding our vision and we affirm the advisory board's decision to be acquired by Focus Church and become one church in two locations? The, the, what we are doing today is we are authorizing our lead pastor and the advisory board all being led by God and using wisdom to take care of the necessary details to complete this joining of two churches. Before we vote on this and before we make this official, is there any questions that you may have today about what God is doing in us as a church? So are you going to be equal co-pastors or is there going to be one Good question. So what we are what we are building is uh, one one church called Focus Church with two locations. So uh, Ryan will be my lead pastor, and I will be the lead of West Madison, and he will be the lead of uh, Sun Prairie. And so we will uh, work on things together. So we have been working out. Uh, as far as sermons go, we are working on those things together. Uh, I have a passion and a heart for discipling and helping people grow in Christ. So part of the thing that they have seen over the last three years is those 140 people that have come to Christ. Uh, they're saying, hey, how can we help them take next steps with Jesus? So part of what I will be doing for all of Focus Church, both, camp, both locations, will be developing some of their discipleship processes for the whole church to help more people make next steps with Jesus. Um, so yes, he will be the lead over the whole. However, we will have we will form a divisor board where one individual from um, existing Cap City Church and myself will sit on that advisory board making decisions for all of Focus Church. So um, we'll make this we'll make decisions together on all of Focus Church, and then I will have specific um, continual pastoral duties here. And West Madison, and he will have specific uh, pastoral duties for Sub Prairie location. That's a good question. Any other questions? Will we be changing our name to Focus Church? Correct. So uh, we will, in, in a, as a marriage, right? And when we enter into marriage, we become one. And so we will change our name from Cap City Church to Focus Church West Madison. And so that will be an official step that we make as we get closer to that. What I'm asking today for is uh, we're affirming what the board has decided because there's some legal things in changing names and becoming two nonprofits, becoming one nonprofit under the Focus Church name. But that will enable uh, financial resources to come together, leadership decisions to come together, and for all of us to be one church, just two separate locations. So we could go to the Sun Prairie one sometimes? Hey, you could visit Sun Prairie. I'm a little closer, huh? Yeah. Well, we eventually, uh, so. No, but yeah. At least that's a No, no. We will do, we will, we do have plans to do some things together. And so, yeah, there will be, there. Um, for instance, we have encounter nights here on Friday nights. They have a once a month worship and prayer night also. So there's potential to do that every once in a while together. Um, baptism, it would be really neat if maybe in the middle of summer we could meet at the lake and have all the Focus Church baptisms, you know, uh, celebrate what, what's God doing this summertime. So there will be some opportunity to do that. But for now, no, we are, uh, we are remaining West Madison and some very locations so that we can continue to develop who we are as a church as well, building teams. We will need uh, the body, the church, to say, yeah, we're, we're in this, we're doing these things together. 
So in my business classes, they always said starting a business together is putting more effort than getting married. Yeah. And this is a business decision. Yeah. So yeah. what do you see as the cons to doing this? So, yeah, so, they, so right now, um, some of the things that we are talking about benefits, we're seeing a lot of those things. Um, there's, there's two steps that I'll be taking this week. One of them is talking with an attorney. Uh, and then the second one is that we have to do what is called a MOU, Memorandum of Understanding. So in that, we'll be going through all of the details of what it will, what it will look like, all the official decisions. Um, the benefits, again, um, ministry together, Again, it's the finances together, it's all of these things becoming stronger. The, the, some of the things on the other side of that, or the, ones, the things that we're aware of, is, um, as I mentioned, they focus uh, a ton on helping more people find Jesus. I'm like, yes! Now the second part of that is adding, me, adding, adding our discipleship DNA into Focus Church. Yes. And so you know, it's not, um, so I wouldn't say, to me it isn't a, or you, you, you said it correctly, a risk. So it's, it's the things that, okay, I'm aware of, we're adapting who they are. So we're saying, Focus Church, we're, we're becoming Focus Church. And then my DNA is going to be added into what they do as a church. So there's some risk involved in that. Yeah, there will be some changes uh, to border service. So there will be some things that we have to, we have to, get, to get used to. However, so we, we say we calling it a risk on one side of it is like, okay, there's a risk because we will be changing things. However, there are continued dreams that I've had. So uh, Kurt and I have talked for a while saying, hey, we want to have communion every single Sunday. Why have we not had communion every single Sunday? The reason why, because I don't have the time on Sunday morning to do it myself. So the risk on a lot of these things is going to be, it's going to require us as a body to step up to what God is asking us to do. Focus Church does communion every single Sunday. I was like, but I, I didn't know that until after we started having discussion. I was like, yes, you know, like we'll, we have to do that. Or that will be part of our commitment, right? Um, they end every service. They have prayer time. I said, yes, we've always wanted to have a prayer team. Okay, everyone is going to force us. It's going to require us to organize. A prayer team, right? Uh, they they have a time of response every Sunday where they write down what God is saying on Sunday. Yes, you know we always wanted to do some of these elements that we're that that that, um, that some of the elements of who Focus Church is are things that we wanted to do, but it's going to be risky because it's going to require us to say, "I'm willing to do it." I'm willing to come early. I'm willing to set these things up. I, you know, and so um, a lot of the vision, because we're both Assembly of God churches, and because we, we both have the vision of helping more people find Jesus, there is far more similarities than there are differences. So the risks are very minimal. On their side, they're taking more risks than what we are financially. So their board had to make the decision, okay, their giving income is only $7,300 a month that doesn't cover their monthly liabilities. There is a risk there on their, on the Focus Church side to saying, hey, we're, we're adopting the church, we're acquiring their debt, we're acquiring their building. And so uh, a lot of on paper risk looks more on Focus Church side saying, hey, we are acquiring a church that um, has met all their bills and has met all their needs, but are not in a healthy, financial place. So a lot of the, if we talk business side, I'd say a lot of the risk is on, on focus trip side, receiving who we are and saying, we're going to continue to pay pastor, we're going to continue to pay down the debt, we're going to re, we're going to re, they're refinancing the loan to take all of our, our debt with their debt. So how is that, how that answer that? Any other questions? If it all goes, it's not going to go sideways. I'm not saying that. Focus Church. Focus Church. We are making a decision to be Focus Church. That's all I have to do.
we're taking a step of faith and saying, God has shown us uh, what he wants to do to help more people find Jesus. His two churches becoming one. Being that they're both, being that we're both aging churches. We're both churches that love the Holy Spirit. We're both churches that love seeing lost people come to Christ. We're both churches that love to worship and love to pray. And both churches that meet in homes on a regular basis. We're saying, no, we're, we're becoming one. We're marrying with each other. And Cap it will, we will never again be called Cap City Church. We will be Focused Church, West Madison. And all for the glory of God and the increase of the kingdom here in Madison. Is that how I was? Yeah, that was. Uh, I have a comment. 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 Um, I just think the, the core of this, the power in this, mm -hmm. is what you said about uh, Ryan uh, and that church is, has a giftedness for bringing the lost to salvation. Mm -hmm. You, and I recognize this in you, um, whatever your name is, Kendra. Thanks, Mary. Kendra, um, is, is that you have a giftedness for uh, discipling. Um, when people are brought to the Lord, they need to be discipled. It's a, a huge, huge lack in the church, and this yeah. is your vision and your passion, and your good at it. And I think that combination of those two giftednesses did you um, ask your mom and dad's opinion before? Ah, oh, <laughs> kind of curious what they think. Just end their legacy. You just cut it off. <laughs> so I was been I've been very uh, I've been very honored to be the lead pastor to be the lead pastor of, of Cassidy Church, and as I have seen over this last year, uh, many in this room uh, have gone from calling me pastor. I told everybody not to call me pastor, call me Andrew. And then I stopped saying that for a while. I don't know if that many people noticed that. Like, oh, I asked, Andrew, did you just get tired of it? We just kept on calling you pastor anyway? Yeah. No. Tell the, story. Tell the story of my first time I was a lead pastor. It was Conway, Missouri. It's a small town of 715 people in the city. And there's a gentleman named Wally. Wally was about 70 years old, kind of like, he was kind of like Lewis, kind of like he'd been in the church, been in the city for a long time, you know, loved Jesus, and he, he had, he, he would come every Sunday, and Wally would call me Andrew, and he would, you know, I would, I would do the sermon on Sunday, Sundays, little small church, so I'd go, go out to the door, and I, as everybody left, I would shake everybody's hand, and they would, hey, see you later, Pastor, or, or Wally, specifically, he would call me Andrew. See you later, Andrew. I'll see you next week. Or I'll say, Andrew, good word. Or Andrew, whatever, you know. And then about six months into my time there, Wally, I was standing at the door, shaking Wally's hand. And Wally said, I'll see you next week, Pastor. First time to call him. And she was, and, and in that moment, that was the first time I was called Pastor in my life, and it was sincere. It wasn't just because I was in a position. In Cap at Cap City Church, over the last year, I corrected everybody, even from the stage. I am Andrew. I'm just like you. I am uh, the same Holy Spirit in me is in you, and I did that intentionally because I'm I'm Andrew. And what I noticed, there's many people when I became lead pastor, uh, or even before that, people would call me pastor. And I'm okay with that. I, I, at that time, so the reason why it bothered me was more because people called me pastor because I had a position, but not because I was their pastor. So you ask that question, Lisa, who, what does mom and dad think about that? <laughs> During this year, I've seen that transition as people have went from calling me Andrew or calling me pastor because I have a position to calling me pastor because they view me as their pastor. I've become many, I, I believe, I've become people's pastor. And so, as I've been sharing, some of you guys in this room I've met with and had coffee with, and I've had our dinner with, or just friends and talks with, telling you guys what the vision would be this Sunday. Why? Because 